Oh. My. Kong. Yep, we're definitely doing this. So I've never done a bad game design before, and to kick it off with this game will undoubtedly be controversial. So before we dive in, I'd like to say a couple things. First off, I understand the irony of introducing a series on negatives during the month celebrating my favorite game franchise, and believe me, I was surprised too. But second, I loved this game as a kid. Please don't think that I hold some horrible grudge with DK64. In fact, I beat it 101% and used the strategy guide to the bone when I was younger. It was one of my favorite games on the N64. I know that a lot of people have deep adoration for this game, and it does have a lot going for it, but when I played it again on Virtual Console last year, I realized there are a lot of things that are objectively bad in this game, so I want to talk about it. But of course I hope you'll understand that I still like this game, and don't mean to offend anyone out there that might hold this as one of their favorites. Now as I mentioned, it does have some good concepts in place, so let's start by talking about the positives. Donkey Kong 64 was all about making things bigger, there's a huge island to explore. Unlike previous games where you're just hopping from level to level on a picture of an island, you're actually discovering new parts of the world as rocks break apart or new doorways become available. The story itself is bigger. K. Rule doesn't just want your bananas anymore, he's got a giant laser beam pointed at your island. I'd consider the stakes raised. Even the way the atmosphere changes as you go to K. Rule's ship, from a sunny beautiful day to gloomy and rainy, just gives so much character and charm to the world. And that's probably this game's biggest strength its personality. Everything has that rareware charisma and memorability, and I haven't even mentioned the Kongs. You get three brand new ones to play with, and you can learn about them by the DK rap or by just watching them in the tag barrel. Look at Chunky, I love how he doesn't want you to pick him. They all had their own abilities, power-ups, musical instruments, and even freaking guns. But you see, this is where the flaws start to come through. The game had incredible scope, and the ideas were solid on paper, but they could have been executed much better in the actual game. There's a lot of things I could talk about in regards to what's wrong with DK64, but none of them are the major issue I had except one of them. I could talk about how there are just too many collectibles. This is a very common complaint I hear about this game, but it never really bothered me that much. Sure there are some items that are a little unnecessary, and they use gating to make some of them feel more important, but when you compare it to other collectathons of the era, it's really not that bad. It gives you more things to do, and I don't find that a bad thing. I could talk about the bad camera and controls, the glitches or frame rate issues, and while this did hinder my experience greatly and frustrated me to no end, I chalk all that up to the limitations of the N64, and developers still figuring things out in 3D space. It certainly wasn't the only game around this time to have these problems, and it also explains why they had to reuse some of the bosses for multiple fights. I could talk about the misuse of bonus barrels, and how they were more of a nuisance than an actual bonus. The placement often seemed completely random, and the games themselves were either really annoying to complete or entirely broken. Beaver, bother, come on! They repeated the same games over and over, but to be fair, that's an issue Donkey Kong has always had, from the original trilogy all the way to the new generation of titles. In fact, DK64 actually had way more variety in the bonus games. They just weren't fun to play. I literally just started to avoid them by the end of the game. I could talk about the underutilization of the animal buddies. These are some of my favorite parts of the series and always made levels more enjoyable, or at the very least helped you clear hard sections. In DK64 they're extremely limited, only showing up in small areas of levels, and are used but a handful of times for a couple golden bananas and a few minigames. Not to mention we can only play as Rambi and Unguard? Give me Squitter, Rattly, Espresso, heck use Squawks to fly around instead of just telling me some dialogue or tutorials. This is a big problem with the new games as well though. Come on Retro Studios, we need more animal buddies. Finally, this one's a bit personal, but I could talk about how annoying the Donkey Kong arcade game was to complete for the Nintendo coin. Like, this would be a fun easter egg, but it's required to beat the game. And it's not even so much that it's really hard, but you have to re-pull the lever every time you die, and it just takes forever- <sighs> Okay, but none of these issues are what bothered me most when I replayed through this game. It all boils down to one major problem that's pervasive through the entire 
experience. And that's how segmented it was. Every single collectible in this game that has value is designated to a specific Kong for them to collect. Not just the golden bananas, but the colored bananas, the banana coins, the blueprints, the banana medals, and even a lot of non-collectibles. The switches, the pads, certain doorways, the gun switches, the music pads, the animal buddies, even the boss fights. Everything is separated from each other and assigned to a specific situation in which you need a particular Kong and their abilities to reach it. Now, why is this a bad thing? On a pause screen, everything looks neat and organized, five bananas for each Kong, etc. Well, let's start small. Look at the opening section for Gloomy Galleon. Just in the first hallway, you have blue, green, and purple bananas, so you'd have to backtrack here three different times just to collect a few measly bananas. But that's not all that's here. There's also gun switches for Diddy, Chunky, and Donkey Kong, Simi and Slam switches for Lanky and Tiny, not to mention a Kremlin to kill for a blueprint, and a ton of these banana balloons that always happen to be placed in the most inconvenient places, all of which need to be collected with different Kongs. Now sure, this could easily be done in a few minutes with a couple quick trips to the tag barrel, but this is just flat ground that's easily accessible. Now look at the climb you have to do in Frantic Factory. This does the same thing with placing different colored bananas all up the tower, but with a much more perilous and time-consuming journey than before. And this wouldn't be too bad as just a few specific examples, but the thing is, this is the whole game. Every string of bananas has to have at least three colors. Areas that lure you in with a specific Kong will also have other collectibles for different Kongs, just so you'll have to come back here again later to collect them. You can't walk five steps in a new world without needing to switch in the tag barrel if you want to collect everything as you go. It won't even let you gather your correctly colored bananas if you transform into an animal buddy. Now, Creepy Castle is probably my favorite level in the game from a design perspective, because they finally decided to place bananas in areas that make sense. When you start this level, you can collect 50 bananas in a row with Donkey Kong, then 50 more in a row with Tiny, and it will help you explore the entirety of the castle exterior, giving you all the warp pads in the process. This is so much better! I didn't feel like I had to go back to a tag barrel every minute, and it helped me get familiar with the level without halting my progress. Unfortunately, the rest of the game does not follow this example. The majority of it feels like a hassle, an out-of-the-way ordeal, and it didn't have to be that way. And these are just the small fry items. Let's talk about the golden bananas, the main collectible in the game. As I mentioned, every golden banana is designated to a specific Kong, and will use their abilities to reach them. The problem is that this will often lead to many different areas that are just cut off from other Kongs, or a bunch of little rooms that only certain Kongs can enter. It becomes a game of hit this switch or play this instrument five different times to have the same outcome. Instead of a connected world where you have to use the Kongs to work together, it feels like five separate games layered on top of each other. They do tasks alone, and need to be switched out all the time if you want to get enough collectibles to progress in the game. Even if a banana is accessible to every Kong, it'll be grayed out unless the right character comes to pick it up. What if instead of isolated efforts, you could get bananas with any Kong, and give multiple options to get them? Why does every Kong have to have an even number of bananas? In the original trilogy, it showed whichever Kong you beat the level with on the map screen, and you could start to see which Kong you favored more. It doesn't require you to beat a certain amount of levels with each Kong. It lets you decide that Dixie is obviously the best choice and you should never choose Kitty, but why not let DK64 have this kind of competition as well? Have the stat screen show which Kong has collected the most golden bananas and regular bananas. Don't restrict your favorite Kongs from being useful. I assume they designed it this way to make each Kong feel valuable and like they're used evenly, but you could still make them valuable without the limitations. What if there were many ways of getting a banana high up in the air, like Lanky's float ability or Tiny's hairspin? What if Donkey Kong could turn invisible to reach a lever that opens a door, but you could also open it with Chunky by throwing a rock at it or use Diddy's head bash? Give the player more freedom to explore with whichever Kong they want. Some things are segregated for seemingly no reason, like the boss fights. Why do I have to fight Dogadon as Chunky here? Look, he doesn't even want to fight him himself. Why not give me the option to get huge and beat him up? or? Use use Diddy's jetpack to fly behind him and hit a sweet spot, or shrink down with Tiny and climb him Shadow of the Colossus style. Okay, maybe that's a little too ambitious, but you see where I'm going with this. It would not only give more options to play the game with, but provide a ton of replayability where you could try battles again with different Kongs. Heck, maybe even challenge runs, like beating the game with only one Kong. In theory, it made sense to have a wide variety of scenarios in which you collect bananas, but what it felt like was five separate treasure hunts happening at the same time. 
And there are some things that don't require a specific Kong to do, like taking pictures of the banana fairies, getting the rareware coin, or the arena battles. So it's not even consistent, it feels like some things were decided randomly to be separated between Kongs or not. Now there is one example of this game using the various abilities in a fantastic way, and that is the final boss fight. This battle is really long, and actually can be really frustrating if you die in the last section, but it uses every Kong and a vast array of their abilities all on one specific foe, King K. Rule. One phase you'll be destroying the lights with Diddy, and the next you're crawling into his shoe to tickle his toes with Tiny. I would have loved to see more of this in the rest of the game. Do part of the task with one Kong, then finish the job with another. Like destroying layers of a fruit hut by using each gun to reach the center, or put a boss to sleep with Chunky's triangle while you deal damage, but then wake him up to move him with Diddy's guitar. Anything to use the different abilities in a cohesive way, instead of an exclusive one. My whole point in critically looking at a beloved game from over 15 years ago is to look at the future. Obviously DK64 is way old and there's no reason to want to change it for its purposes alone, but this kind of thing is important to think about as games continue to evolve. With a small resurgence of collectathons coming and the old team coming back together to make ukulele, I hope to see more creativity than ever with the genre. Please understand that all of this critique comes out of a love for this type of game, and wanting to improve it even more. It looks like ukulele will be focusing on interconnected and ever-expanding worlds to try things that haven't been done before. I'm nervous and excited at the same time to see how it turns out, but I hope we can learn from mistakes in the past to help improve games that have yet to come. That wraps up our first ever bad game design. I promise the next one won't be so negative. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed Donkey Kong Month this year. It was a blast for me to put it all together, even if it meant I had to play through the entirety of DK64 in a week for footage. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't yet because there's a ton more videos to come, almost every week. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up and tell me in the comments below your thoughts on DK64. I know a lot of people still love it to this day, so it'd be cool to get a good dialogue going. What did you like? What did you dislike? And what do you think they could have done better? Finally, you can always help support the channel and improve quality for the future by chipping in on Patreon. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty, my friends.